I'm Ankita, and I'm a software engineer at Meta. And today, I'll give an overview of the Torch multimodal library that we released recently. So let's start with a quick refresher on multimodality. Very simply put, any task that needs to reason over or handle different types of input or output, be it text, video, images, or audio, can be categorized as a multimodal task. A popular one from research is visual question answering. So given an image and a question, the task is to predict the correct answer. Now it's critical to incorporate the understanding of the data from different modalities to be able to get to the right answer. So in this case, the image signals are critical for understanding if the color of the sky is red or blue. There are other popular tasks, like being able to retrieve relevant images or videos given an input text, uh, or more recently, being able to generate images conditioned on an input text. And of course, multimodality is not just limited to research, it's heavily used in practical applications as well. So being able to understand the content from video or posts is a critical part of uh, recommending relevant uh, items to a user on social media, and that's inherently a multimodal problem. So is the task of understanding if the content is harmful or offensive to the user. And we also have applications like self-driving cars, where you need to be able to combine the sensor data with the visual data to get a holistic understanding of the state of the vehicle. So with the aim of making the lives of ML researchers and practitioners working in the field of multimodal AI easier, we are introducing Torch Multimodal. This is essentially a PyTorch-based library to accelerate and eno uh, enable innovation in multimodal AI. So let's take a look at the core principles that we focused on when we started building out this library. So firstly, modularity, where we offer modular building blocks that can be imported and used out of the box. So for example, multimodal models often have unimodal encoders and fusion modules that users can choose to use out of the box uh, independently in their code so that they can mix and match with other components as well. Next is interoperability. So we want to accelerate exploration and reduce duplication, so we provide components that, can, that are interoperable and composable with components from other parts of the ecosystem. For instance, you should be able to swap out a standard text encoder, which is part of a multimodal model, with a component from another library or maybe even your custom encoder. And finally, extensibility. It's very critical for the user to be able to write their custom components by extending the standard ones from our library. So for example, you might want to import just the core model so that you can add your own task-specific layers and fine-tune it on a custom task instead of the one that the model was pre-trained on. So today, the key offerings from our libraries include uh, the common low-level building blocks. These are essentially Lego pieces that are useful if you want to build a model from scratch. Then we have the end-to-end -end models, which are state-of-the-art, so you could import them and instantiate them for reproducing results uh, from academia or for experimenting with your own use case. And we also have a repository of example scripts that can act as a starting point if you're a researcher looking to write your own training pipeline. And these also demonstrate very common techniques like multitask learning, zero-shot evaluation, and integration with other PyTorch distributed APIs. So to cover a few example offerings that we have, uh, for building blocks, we have visual, uh, uh, vector quantized variational autoencoder, which helps in learning the discrete latent uh, representation for your data and forms the visual tokenization layer for a lot of the generative models today. There is also the cross-modal contrastive loss, which can be plugged into any use case and is also used by several examples in our library. Which also brings me to CLIP, which is an end-to-end -end model, uh, which is image text model that was pre-trained using the contrastive loss. And we also have MDETA, which is essentially a text extension of the popular object detection algorithm DETA. For example, scripts, we added Omnivore pre-training. Omnivore was work done in Facebook AI research where a single visual encoder multitasks to learn image, video, and 3D representations. 
And finally, we also have another foundation multimodal model flavor, which I will talk about soon. All right, now let's dive deeper into how you can train CLIP, which uses aligned image and text data for cross-modal learning. So the components that you need from Torch Multimodal are the specific transform, the model, and the loss. So the transform handles all of the pre-processing, so your text tokenization and image resizing, et cetera. And you can use any image text data set and set the transform on that. Then you need to instantiate the model. So here we are using the CLIP VIT L14 uh, default configurations, but you could also choose to instantiate your model with your own parameters by using the raw model class. And finally, you hook up the contrastive loss, uh, which also has a learnable temperature parameter par as part of it. And then you just sort of put all of the components together into your training loop like any other model. Next, we go over how you could use a pre-trained model uh, from our library for your task. So here we are using Flava, which is a vision language foundation model. It was essentially pre-trained by multitasking on both unimodal and multimodal data with various supervised and unsupervised text, vision, and multimodal objectives like image text matching, uh, contrastive learning, and mass language modeling. And here we have a demo video. I'm going to walk through how we can use the pre-trained flavor model for a unimodal task, which is image classification. We treat image classification as a case of zero-shot eval for the model. Firstly, we need the transforms for pre-processing and converting raw data into tensors. We use the flavor image transform out of the box, and for text, we use the bird text tokenizer, which was used by the flavor text encoder. Next thing we need is the model. Here we use the core flavor model and set pre-trained as true, which loads the pre-trained weights. With these three elements instantiated, let's write a small function that takes in the model, image, and the set of all possible labels and predicts the label with highest probability. Since we are doing zero-shot eval, no training is involved, so we set the model to eval mode and do everything in no grad settings. The image tensor comes from image transform and the labels get tokenized and tensorized through the text transform. The encode image and encode text APIs on the model do the forward pass through the respective encoders and return the CLS token embeddings after being passed through the projection layers. We get the similarity scores of the image with each possible label by taking the dot product. And finally, we do a softmax to get a probability distribution over the labels. So here I have a picture of a dog that I want to classify. Since Flava has a text encoder which can work with any natural language input, the label set can be anything. So here we see the model can predict the correct label from dog, cat, and house. But we can also change the label set to be something completely different and the model is still able to predict the correct phrase, which is picture of a pet in this case. All right. Now let's see how we can use Flava for a multimodal task, which is visual question answering. This time we fine tune the model on the text VQA dataset, which we load first from Hugging Face. So the input is an image and a question, and the model has to predict the correct answer. In this case, the question is about the airline in the picture. We treat VQA as a classification task where the answer is predicted from fixed set of answer vocab that we build here. For transforms, we use the same text and image transform that we used in the zero shot case, but we also add logic to convert the answers to tensors by looking up from the answer vocab. We set these transforms on the data set. Then we get to the model. In this case, we use the flavor variant for classification, which is essentially the core model that we used in the zero shot case, but with an MLP classifier head added to it. Again, we set pre-trained to true because we want to fine tune the weights. We also need to give the output dimension for the MLP or the number of classes as an input. For the model forward, we pass the text, image, and labels. 
This does the forward pass on respective unimodal encoders before fusing the unimodal embeddings by passing through the multimodal encoder. The CLS token embedding from the multimodal encoder is passed through the MLP classifier to give the final logits. The model also computes the cross entropy loss from the logits and labels. So all you have to do now is to hook up this model to a simple training loop to fine tune. So here I just covered some examples of how to use a model from Torch Multimodal for different use cases. You can also hook up Flava to other tasks like text classification or use other models from our library for fine tuning on VQA. Please visit our GitHub repo for such detailed examples. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we're just getting started. We have just done the beta release for our library, and we also have a bunch of exciting things on our upcoming roadmap. So firstly, we aim to solidify the support for the existing modalities like vision and text by adding uh, more diverse models for the, them and making our API stable. At the same time, we want to increase the set of supported modalities so that we can cater to different parts of the multimodal community. So we are looking at adding things like audio and sensor, uh, data support. Secondly, uh, with semi and self-supervised learning becoming very popular with research work like MAEs, uh, we think SSL is going to be very important. So adding SSL primitives which work in multimodal settings which can just be plug and play is also something we are looking forward to. And of course, with the recent breakthroughs in the space of multimodal AI, we hope to add both building blocks as well as end-to-end -end components for tasks like multimodal summarization or text to image creation. So please check out our GitHub repo as well as some of the blogs and tutorials that we published recently to learn more about our library. And that's all I have, thank you.